Ciao a tutti, benvenuti. Hello everyone, welcome to Rise of Legends LP. And um, here I am. Um, um, oh, excuse me for my hack Italian. I mean, after all, I'm controlling Giacomo. Uh, clearly inspired by um, Italian uh, um, name, I guess. And then um, even the entire Vinci side is basically uh, taking after Leonardo da Vinci and his numerous sketches and, uh, excuse me, numerous sketches and, and designs. And the territory names are all in Italian, it seems. Um, definitely has an Italian flavor. Um, yeah, and uh, anyways, yes. Last time we conquered Tarona and uh, came back to the wasteland to gauge our situation. We could have gone to Monte Laguna, probably a bit more temperate and I guess more, yeah, climate is probably better than what we encountered in the wasteland, you know, which is stormy dark weather. And other thing, um, I have to apologize for my um, mispronunciation of the Viscount, or as it is correctly pronounced, Viscount. Um, I was just having a, some kind of brain cramp there. Um, even the cinematic clearly, I checked this, even the cinematic clearly mentioned the Viscount, and I kept saying Viscount. I wonder why. Um, yeah, I apologize for that um, mistake. And yeah, I'm just learning new things every day, it seems. And now we have to um, go to Lanconi. Either way, um, either from Monte Laguna or from the wasteland, I don't really think it really matters which direct, which approach we take. Um, I like to think that the game would maybe differentiate uh, the path leading to um, Lanconi, but. I don't really think so. By the way, the Doge is still, I guess, basking his glory as he conquered what uh, was uh, Don Sclario's capital, Felino. And probably, um, probably trying to either take Corbin Isle to his north, uh, northeast, or northeast, and or um, I don't know what other what that territory was to the east of it but uh, yeah either um, one of those I, I bet I don't think he's going to um, retreat from his uh, you know newly conquered territory I mean he's gonna even if he retreats he's gonna conquer his way in a retreat so that is how the Doge rolls Kalini has been upgraded to full um, hero um, so yeah, there's no need to look at the heroes as they are probably all upgraded. And better at the Ranconi Bridge. And this Ranconi territory has a great bridge, um, as they call it. Uh, it is the only, apparently the only, um, I guess, path that connects the rest of the continent to the capital. So I'm guessing if I didn't take Ranconi or try to approach the capital from the south, maybe I would be advised to conquer Ranconi next. So either way, then we have to pass this territory. The terrain surrounding Ranconi is rugged and impassable, making the town and its bridge critical to trade in the region. The enemy has a small city near the bridge. This outpost guards the crossing it must be dealt with before we can try to cross to the other side. When we control this city, we'll be able to secure this side of the Ranconi Gorge. Yeah, anyways, uh, this is also my um, second attempt at recording my voice after the game session has ended, or already been recorded. Uh, my simultaneous uh, voice recording uh, session didn't go too well. I was very tired and my voice, voice was very muffled. I was not able to deliver the you know best quality audio. It was actually terrible, terrible. Uh, I sounded like a very, I know I sounded really thin for some reason. Oh, uh, I paused the game there for some reason. Maybe there was some kind of mishap while I was trying to adjust my microphone. Yeah. Anyways, um, 
I was uh, looking over, you know, my previous LP recordings. Um, I found a couple of things. Uh, my voice definitely needs some improvement. My delivery also needs a uh, vast improvement before it is, I guess, qu quite, you know, appropriate for the the demonstrative qualities befitting let's plays like this. And you, like you just heard, I. Um, click my mouth a lot I'm also really keen on that you know, I have to really you know really hold back on uh, that kind of bad uh, habit that I have and my forces uh, are trying to attack that small outpost that uh, Jacko mentioned in the intro that there was a small outpost that we have to take before um, trying to cross the bridge and the idea was good um, but I underestimated, terribly underestimated the kind of uh, the strength and resolve of the Doge defenders here. Um, they had to cross the bridge to supplement their losing troops since I don't know if they even had a barracks or any kind of uh, production facilities. They have prototype factory and uh, a mine or two. And also, as you see it later, um, they have something, some structures uh, quite removed from their outpost, but it was um, part of a secondary objective. And Giacomo makes a short work of the product, prototype factory, and I think this emboldened us to continue on, because um, we thought that the level and scale of the resistance will not... And here, um, I see that they're trying to rebuild the prototype factory. I should have known by then that um, this is not supposed to be the mission where they just, you know, they just slink away after their defenses have been um, marginalized or compromised. My air destroyers are doing a pretty good job. Uh, I really feel that they have become a very important part of my, my uh, entire army. And I don't know what had happened just then, but yeah, the action is getting uh, very, very heavy. Uh, and I just used my clockwork, um, I guess bombers, um, where they, yeah, where they are basically clockwork men with a TNT strip to their back. They walk over and they kneel as in a praying position and they blow up dealing 150 worth of um, points of damage. Which is very useful but the problem is that I think if they get hit even once they blow up and uh, they have to travel to their target in order to in order to effectively um, use it, use that ability and uh, you just now seen an army of spider uh, clockwork spiders converging on our force and this really was the point turning point where I sort of got the idea that the resistance and then the course of the game really um, will be um, very contested at least yeah uh, I think yeah, I was very confused uh, when uh, they had they had, uh, this uh, Clockwork Spider rush. Uh, very confused and sort of dejected because they are clearly pushing my forces uh, away, and I have to be the hasty retreat while my reserve force is nowhere to see, and I was almost out of timonium. And add to that, uh, Giacomo was in danger himself. And my, yeah, my defenses are completely, completely non-existent. So the only unit, only unit uh, surviving out of the initial army, uh, which was substantial, it even uh, had a juggernaut. But after that, uh, only uh, surviving units for air destroyers, Giacomo and couple of uh, musketeers and a clerk workman so this was a complete defeat on my part uh, it's gonna take a long time before I could ever recover from uh, such a huge loss and here yeah the Giacomo has fallen uh, which was a terrible sight to see
but at least uh, he was able to distract the spider from um, killing off the air destroyer and air destroyer with its uh, um, superior range could was able to so parry the musketeers, the rebel, the rogue musketeers of the Doge's side and bring a bit of reprieve to the to the rest of my uh, force and territory and now uh, you, you can see that I have recalled Giacomo and uh, thankfully the first hero comes almost free basically, uh, 100 Timonium and 100 well um, that time I didn't really have any um, you know, resources to regard that kind of expense as being trivial. It was uh, very significant, but Giacomo's involvement, um, and I really needed Giacomo because, I mean, he had some very useful abilities, and frankly, without Giacomo, then, you know, our army's strength at this time, at this point in time, was basically, you know, cut in half. So yeah, we are basically trying to hold our line at our at the mine. This was our marginal line, um, more or less. And the Doge cannon, as I, s you know, if if you have seen my LP or, um, I guess suffered my LP for a while, and you see how I despise Doge cannon. It just seems that they just given them an upgraded siege engine to just I think there's their basic siege engine with superior range and firepower and I don't know whether they are more sturdy but if they're not sturdy if not sturdy then they can produce at least um, as many units afforded by the smaller health uh, and the thing about siege engines is that they stay behind. They stay behind and uh, pelt our troops and bombard our troops further. And sometimes their um, hit points do not really matter because they are protected and they often attack from the from behind the lines. So the Doge cannon it combines the best element of what uh, a siege machine is going is uh, looks like. And you will see later um, how Doge Cannon, how the AI uses the Doge Cannon. Um, it really is um, insufferable in terms of how effective they are. Yeah, now we are getting into you know a bit of a shape right now. We are forming what looks like uh, sort of a another, um, I guess, regiment or army worthy of defending uh, the front lines and uh, still um, our my resources uh, are very scant and I was foolish enough yeah you can see the Doge cannon uh, shooting away from up top the hill um, thankfully Giacomo has drawn all the uh, tension but with the incoming army we of the Blackworks Spiders, um, we were in a, another phase where we had to be on the defensive. And uh, yeah, it was not a really good situation. Um, I had to basically resort to risking my air destroyer in order to just escape from the situation, even, you know, resorting to barrage. With it uh, terribly loud sound, uh, if, I might have, if I might add. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Yeah, I just used the ability to recall the Clark work, um, I guess, um, bombers, and they deal tremendous amount of damage. You can see that they wiped out uh, almost half of the the full strength regiment of full strength group of musketeers, and they received hundred wealth from the caravan. Uh, because uh, my adjoining territory had, uh, I guess, merchant district. Yeah, the air destroyer has been very helpful, especially on the ledges where the enemy has a hard time uh, uh, targeting the the airborne unit, and it sort of gives them more distance to work with. 
either from the cliff wall or from the mountainside because they are, I guess, uh, situated higher uh, on the, I guess, altitude. Uh, they have more distance to cover or they are more uh, farther away so the enemy cannot really target it. Now we are trying to push forward once again and capture their mine. And the, basically their outpost is uh, shooting at, shooting at uh, our force. We make a bit of a turn. Um, I don't know why I was trying to do that, but uh, maybe trying to confuse the enemy. Yeah, and then I also... I beat a hasty, not hasty, but ordered retreat there. Maybe I saw the clockwork spider coming. And I think at the time I swore just a bit because um, those cannon... Yeah, this was the, the structure I was talking about. This was another... Uh, this was really a secondary objective. Um, and I think I have already built an observatory or a telescope. So it wasn't really needed, but... Um, maybe um, capturing that structure would have uh, stopped the flow of those cannons uh, appearing from the you know, from, from top of the hill. Uh, yeah, this was a very, very irrita irritating situation. Now, finally, I built a dirigible and uh, tried to stem the, the attrition damage. And uh, because of the combat uh, needs and the attention that you know the combat took, I sort of shirked um, my responsibility to you know continually gain research points and upgrade our national border or uh, prosperity which uh, is the rate which increases the rate of healing of our units within our territory so we're making a bit of progress uh, bit by bit and uh, yeah I'm trying to place defense tower that one of the ways you can uh, strengthen your grip on the newly expanded territory. I always wondered uh, how they were able to um, maybe transport their troops uh, from the on the top of the hill. Um, maybe they had a I don't know secret passageway or shortcut or something. But after I conquered the structure uh, observatory, after I captured the observatory, I searched for any kind of backdoor. Um, pathway to see if I can make use of it, but I was not able to find it. Maybe it was um, sort of a script, uh, scripted event or something that produced those uh, units so that they can attack us uh, from both, both sides. And we are slowly making our way to capture the, the Southpost city. Everything is on fire. Yeah, like they're still coming out. And I think this is a part of the inn. Um, you know, they had inn also uh, on the top of the hill, but only thing that you could probably produce from the inn are the mercenaries, uh, which they have produced in quantities, as you've seen in the last uh, minute of the video. They had a lot of men on the, on the top. Um, but I don't know how they're able to produce clock mines. Maybe the Doge has the, the option of doing so. Um, basically uh, making it, making the in a combination of steam fortress and, uh, you know, impromptu barracks. So which advantage that the Doge clearly used against us uh, to a great advantage. Um, yes. Um, our troops are all uh, concentrating on the taking of the city there and uh, trying to make make it across the maybe uh, to the bridge and uh, inject more definitely helps with the sonic burst 
while our lone musketeer there is trying to hold the line, defend the, uh, the other flank. And I think he did his job, amazingly enough. I'm not so sure what those uh, yellow um, status symbol on the top of my Mustic Tears are. Probably they were either confused or I think it's in sort of a status ailment. And I'm starting to produce more airborne uh, base units and uh, finally I took notice of the, the state of our research and um, try to upgrade some wealth. Yeah, Jepoma is doing all he all he, uh, he he can to stem the tide of this wave after wave of those uh, brown units. Yeah, Bear Destroyer in order to target the Doge cannon. I think they're pretty okay. With the city under our control, yep. the enemy will try to stop our now advance the, at the bridge. The bridge. The city of Ranconi is on the other side. We must capture it. Yeah, another bridge is supposed to be a great bridge, but this is no different from the bridge that we saw in the first mission. Um, it doesn't seem that great to me, but um, I think it's also a draw bridge where you can also lift it up or not. Uh, I don't know why the Doge is going to do what he's going to do to the bridge. Um, it doesn't quite make sense. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just a you know, just a baseless complaint, I guess. I mean, it's still quite weird. And uh, yeah, this deluge of troops are pressuring me. Pressuring my forces at every turn. And then you can see. Um, you can see that they have what uh, seems to be a steam fortress and a defense tower just after crossing the bridge. And this clockwork miner is, I think, trying to save the observatory atop the hill. Or they're at least trying to reinforce. Yeah, demolition truck. Demolition truck is headed for the bridge. Yes, that's what they're trying to do. Um, if, if, it, if it was up to me, uh, I would just, you know, lift up, lift up the bridge or something like that. But um, I guess Doge has this penchant, uh, penchant for other destruction and despair. So I mean, that's that's how the Doge rolls. And these caravans are, you know. They've been trying to. Um, after this, this a city outpost has been taken over, it's trying to trade with uh, some. Uh, you know, I don't know, some mine down south, trying to cross our territory that way. But yeah, and that is the demolition, demolition truck. Um, and every time the demolition truck appears, Giacomo has something to say, which is the same phrase. Yeah, just like you heard right now. I mean, he says that every time the demolition truck has been produced and he's heading our way. Um, I mean, after a couple of notices or a couple of uh, his exclamations, I mean, it gets rather old, but at least it's quite helpful that uh, maybe we can fail the mission um, if the demolition truck was to blow up the bridge. And the amount of the damage, that, the amount of the, you know, amount of, um, yeah, the amount of um, the kind of uh, explosions and damages that the that the bridge is taking. Maybe the demolition truck could have been a, some kind of placebo for us to just continue attack that side of the bridge and eventually uh, destroy the bridge itself. Um, I mean, the, bri the bridge is withstanding so much of the, so much of our, our bodies of fire that I wonder, like, if it was made of, like, I don't know, adamantium or something, and uh, 
a mere demolition truck is not going to even dent that bridge. So, yeah, it was pretty funny how. Uh, yeah, it was pretty funny how most of the action uh, from now uh, here on out until you know, the very end, where I um, s just go after um, their the capital, a great city. The most of the action is on the bridge. The small space, the small real real estate, is where we see the greatest amount of casualty, destruction, fireworks, death, and waste of resources. I have gained a large city, therefore our territory has been expanded. A demolition truck is headed for the bridge. Yeah, a demolition another demolition truck. Once um, I think one demolition truck alone is not enough. I think they have to cover at least the uh, width of the bridge before the script triggers to basically um, triggers to destroy the bridge, I guess. And I don't I don't know whether uh, if if the if uh, I don't know whether uh, if the bridge is destroyed then they would uh, result in the failure of the mission but I could still use a dirigible to transport um, units and still make it you know making the game and also I'm building slowly but I'm, s I'm slowly building a squadron of air destroyers and Pirata flyers, so I don't think bridge being destroyed would have ended the end, would have uh, meant the end of the mission in failure. I think it would have made it much harder for us to mount a uh, two sided attack. But yeah, the Doge uses industrial devastation on the bridge. How is it possible? I thought the drills is gonna come out of the ground or something, but and if the, if the devastation was basically did what it was supposed to do, you would have you know, destroyed the bridge a long time ago. I mean, come on, I mean, I mean the business uh, engineering would, would have been very impressive, but not to this extent. I'm only half uh, joking, of course. Um, yeah, uh, it's pretty funny though how the the kind of uh, the kind of damage a that you know the bridge is taking uh, right now would have been enough to level the whole entire city, but you know he's still standing strong. Maybe the Doge should you know consider building his city under the bridge. Yeah, I'm finally um, trying to take over that accursed observatory. And they have accumulated the demolition truck, and I start to get worried. They're, and then um, basically send their destroyer outside of my territory um, in order to in order to uh, destroy the demolition trucks before it gets too late. Okay. We can use the Imperial Observatory to spy on the and I guess we can uh, build more than one observatory or telescope and uh, use more than one observatory to reveal multiple parts of the map. Uh, and the demolition trucks are being produced at the nearby steam uh, fortress. It's one of the objectives that we destroy them, destroy it. And they will stop the annoying uh, Giacomo's um, warning. I mean, Giacomo's uh, incessant warning about demolition trucks uh, has become much more of a burden on um, on my psyche and uh, my um, um, way of uh, dealing with this than the actual demolition truck and the uh, specter or the prospect prospect of uh, mission failure. I know, I know. A demolition truck is headed for the bridge. 
yeah, I think maybe as the time goes on, um, Steam Fortress may be producing these trucks at a faster clip. Uh, we are holding uh, rather strong. Um, our recently upgraded musketeers, uh, grenadiers, um, are, I guess, proving their metal, it seems. Finally, I get another prototype. It's been a long time coming, actually. And because, um, yeah, I neglected to build up my mine as well, therefore, um, I. Now that I'm kind of uh, stabilized my situation over the bridge, I can sort of, sort of pay attention to the, to the internal affairs of uh, my territory. Air destroyers are doing a wonderful job. They're slow and lumbering. They are more prone to stay where they are and just bombard the units as they come along. And they just stay there, uh, more or less, uh, like some other troops. Um, sometimes uh, follow the retreating troops and become themselves ambushed or surrounded by the superior enemy forces waiting for them. Yeah, and then as um, soon as I uh, place my defense tower, uh, just as if on a queue, the enemy Pyrrha flyers come a-knocking. And strange enough, they go back for some reason, allowing my defense tower to be built in peace. And they kind of uh, cause a brief uh, realignment of my troops, but I don't know what they were trying to do. Maybe just a. Maybe just a. Oh, and then they come back, of course. Now to target a more vulnerable target. Uh, yeah, more vulnerable structure. But by then, uh, my defense structure, defense tower has been constructed and uh, it's been to pelt the flyers. And. I think they are driven back. And um, I should purchase mercenaries because the inn was right there. I mean, they cost only wealth, they don't cost Timonium. But maybe they are weaker. Weaker versions of the musketeer. And after losing their Pyrrha flyer, the Doge heads back. Kind of sort of. Um, provokes me, not provokes, but sort of incites me to uh, construct another defense tower. And now the scale of the attack has expanded with the Doge cannon appearing to support the demolition troops, demolition trucks, excuse me. And I tr attempt to get into The range of their defense towers and try to barrage, barrage them. The barrage works quite well against structures, and uh, you can see that I had a bit of a trouble in selecting the air destroyers uh, because of the different, different uh, I guess altitude uh, the unit um, is the unit is present in, but also because. Double clicking the same unit uh, usually selects the unit of the same type, but um, somehow I was not able to um, you know, make that work for me well. And the other problem is that the air unit, I guess, unit marker does not appear on the air near the, the unit itself, but appears on the ground above which the air unit is placed, so it is occupying some space and maybe that has to do with why I had so much trouble um, targeting the destroyer in the first place. Yeah, and now the clockwork spider has joined the fray and despite the whole barrage of missiles uh, sh shot from the spiders from the outset, the destroyer is thankfully uh, holding, uh, one of them has been destroyed 
But the story is holding uh, pretty well, uh, fortunately enough. A demolition truck is headed for the bridge. Yeah, um, this is going to be an all-out battle, and uh, and I don't know what had just happened, but I remember basically producing a uh, clockwork. Um, I guess demolition squad and because they were hit uh, at the very moment that they were called or they were produced they exploded right there and then and thankfully there was no friendly fire or else it could have been pretty damaging for Giacomo and his forces over the bridge yeah the Doge is uh, using uh, his devastation and the thing is that he reminded uh, me that there was uh, skills called devastation available and uh, I you know I often forget to use the abilities uh, so I mean every time the Doge uses devastation it's a kind of reminder that I have to use one too and since I use it at the same time as the Doge then it means that it's already um, you know it's already there uh, waiting for me to um, activate it yeah, so it's a pitched battle, and I s start to uh, produce a heavier, um, heavy, uh, I guess, larger unit, and preparing for constructing the air squadron. Oh, here, I'm not so, I'm not really sure of the the placement of the enemy capital. Um, I had I had been neglecting to upgrade my city for a while, so I come back to this, as well as um, trying to see if I can build research lab over the bridge. But you see me uh, trying desperately to find any kind of structure that I can take over to expand my territory over the bridge, but to no avail. There's nothing. Uh, this map is quite uh, restricted. Um, Giacomo has already mentioned that this um, terrain is very rugged, uh, full of mountain, and he was right. I mean, there's very little space to move around in. Um, and since the last time we checked on the Doge's capital, they have built this megapolis that's gonna take uh, a lot of effort to bring down. And I'm not so sure why, uh, I'm not so sure who's aiming who right now, but um, the thing is that uh, we are fully in enemy territory and we don't get the benefit of defense, which means that my units do not get healed and it can be whittled down if they can just mess troops like that uh, after uh, waves after waves. Yeah, and you, is, you can see that I'm. Um, Retreating because you know I have learned my lesson the first time. I don't want to lose Giacomo, and uh, I also recently called Carlini. I didn't even mention, I didn't even notice it, but Carlini definitely was born on the bridge, and his turret ability and snipe could uh, be pretty useful. And obviously, I'm using my siege engine the wrong way. That's why I'm trying to bring it back, but uh, it's easier said than done because the unit. Collision detection definitely is present in this game, and I'm not so sure like, how it is calculated, but it's there. And sometimes, um, in the kind of a enclosed space, um, such as the bridge here, um, it's, it can be pretty um, can be a bear of a. I guess not, not really, uh, I'm using a wrong expression here, it can be very irritating and very hard to move around uh, the way that you want. I mean, you can, you can see this game organizing troops very well on open spaces. Often the most the weak units line up on the front, uh, regardless they're melee or uh, ranged attack. But most often than not, um, 
a melee heavy or medium unit line up on the first front line. Then followed by a range unit. Then um, and the rest of the siege weaponry and um, big units such as the juggernaut bring up the rear. So it's, it's if you see uh, in if you see uh, the unit uh, formation uh, in I guess in work, it can be pretty can be pretty um, can be a sight to behold um, can be pretty gratifying to watch your unit automatically organizing themselves like that um, but on this bridge for example um, it is rather hard to uh, for the AI maybe or to have that kind of arrangement work so Siege Engine has Gone uh, to the front, making them very vulnerable. And uh, I think one of them has been destroyed already. Uh, siege engine is very weak. Yeah, and then that was not a really good decision on my part. And uh, this micromanagement is clearly taking a toll on the rest of my uh, gameplay gameplay uh, style because. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm just not noticed that I have enough research point and uh, could have upgraded that, uh, you know, a few minutes ago at least, but uh, didn't notice it. It seems, or at least I'm building research labs now to catch up on the different uh, you know, research. Uh, for example, their destroyers uh, have a lot of health point hit points, so. They're very hardy, but if your prosperity is a little low, then it's gonna take forever for them to be healed. And this, um, basically placing or parking your unit and making them uh, making them idle is the is the only way for you to only only way you have in fixing uh, your unit. So it can be pretty difficult to manage them, uh, to move them back and forth, and trying to gain any kind of a, um, trying to gain any kind of, uh, I guess, leverage in terms of unit placement that way. And the enemy is relentless; they are just keep sending units. They are. And yeah, this is the uh, first time I see them retreating. Um, maybe they noticed uh, my destroyers in their territory, or I don't know. But yeah, and you can see here that they have built tremendous amount of structures in that small space. It's filled to the brim with uh, different structures and whatnot. My siege engine has made a very costly mistake. Maybe it was my mistake of placing them too, um, too. I guess placing them a bit in front, and as the unit retreated, uh, they obviously followed, uh, which they shouldn't have. And I should definitely um, practice more with the stances. They have stances in the game where you can set them to be more aggressive or more defensive and even passive. Um, whereby they wouldn't even bat an eye when uh, in in uh, sight of an enemy. And I also need to probably uh, consider building more than one unit producing structure. It has worked for me in the past, but with the kind of volume of enemy uh, waves, I really need to think about uh, building multiple structures too. Uh, make sure that I have enough uh, forces to counter them. Yeah, it is like just a, um, just keep trying to develop all aspects of your army and manage the health of uh, your your forces. Um, that no uh, stone is left unturned. Every aspect of your forces are well equipped and well managed. Your Resource cap is uh, if your resource rate is not capped uh, and 
basically allows the wealth to flow in without any obstacle. There's the kind of things uh, that you should be very mindful of, I guess, in playing any kind of strategy game, but um, as I feel the desperate need to um, follow that, follow my advice, my own advice, um, I guess it's a sign, only a sign of a fairly competent and even a great strategy game. The defense there is substantial, which, which forget that, it's, it's formidable. And since I cannot gain any kind of foothold uh, in, in terms of territory, expanding my territory over the bridge, I have to make sure that uh, we have uh, plenty of dirigibles and whatnot, but uh, here is a part where I neglected that. And it's exposing my troops to attrition. And yeah, Doge has already uh, also reminded me to use the devastation power. This combined forces of the Doge is very effective. Uh, even with the Juggernaut uh, basically holding the front lines, um, you will see that it would not be enough against the smaller but massed units that concentrate on um, you know, the, their target, target of most importance. Uh, for now, it seems uh, they are trying to go for the Juggernaut on the left. And yeah, the Doge Walker makes its appearance. Um, and Doge Walker is also a very um, painful unit to deal with. Uh, you can see that there's some kind of ailment symbol on the top of my destroyer. I don't know what that really means, but it can't be something that is good. It's it probably one of the powers that uh, related to um, the Doge's units that I'm not really uh, quite familiar with. And Kalini just used the snipe ability to take care of the Doge Walker. And uh, if I notice that kind of details, um, such as uh, individual units that give give my uh, forces a lot of trouble, I have no choice to um, go for that kind of individual uh, powers, uh, which is very useful. and. Uh, which I really need to use more of. And also I used uh, the turret ability, which is an upgraded turret. And I'm trying to uh, call the heroes, airman heroes, to accompany my uh, squadron. And uh, first uh, first time in a long while, I'm calling Venza uh, to support Lenora. And yeah, Venza is uh, I guess a more of a swashbuckler kind of pirate kind of character, uh, smuggler probably, but uh, she uh, offers wealth for enemy destroyed or damage inflicted, so she can be pretty useful, and she definitely has more uh, hit points. And um, her third ability is uh, some kind of a drone that attacks while falling down from the sky. So, yeah, the Doge Cannon, uh, my nemesis. Um, I guess it's quite uh, fragile, but still, it's probably stronger than your average Siege Cannon. And Doge also, Doge Walker uh, makes uh, now a regular appearance from now on. Which doesn't bode well for my troops on the ground. And I concentrate uh, ever, uh, ever so much on creating air destroyer, a mass of air destroyers. These carpet men are mm, produced from the smelter it seems I built. Um, they are more or less uh, disposable. Well, not really, but uh, they can certainly hold their own uh, for a few seconds at least to be able to, uh, for, for us to be able to catch some breath on the bridge. Yeah, it lasts quite a while, especially if the clockwork men are grouped together. They do have this synergy effect, uh, which is pretty cool. 
I think they heal faster and deal more damage if they're grouped together. Which is quite nice. Um, I built... Uh, I don't know what that is, but it's a, the structure with the lightning um, around it. It is uh, a structure that nullifies the enemy's special abilities for a short while. It's basically a reenactment of a uh, bridge too far uh, for the dodge. We now have a dirigible supporting our airborne unit. And you will see that we are trying to create another dirigible for our ground troops. But the wealth is uh, obviously lacking. I should have sent Venza over to the other side to destroy some. Um, you know, low level melee units. Oh, here we go. So, I guess I was a bit tired of waiting. Um, they looked at the, the time uh, counter and said, well, 46 minutes, that's enough. And uh, I'm too ignorant of the fact that moving my dirigible to the left still made it still place it in the range of the steam fortress with its, um, I guess, equivalent, um, I guess with it, wow, that was really loud, the barrage of the ability of six or so air destroyers really makes quite a, quite a din, and yeah, and Venza unfortunately has uh, been the focus of the enemy attack. Um, for some reason and had to retreat because uh, her health was basically one third of, of uh, one third of what it was um, before she just started attacking and the city itself is open for this kind of attack because it's right on the cliff side I mean it looks cool but it just uh, it's going to be a just cake walk for airborne units to just you know come in and Way, lay waste and yeah uh, I also moved my eastern unit but unfortunately I have uh, because due to my uh, apparent uh, intense dislike for Doge Walker I said to say the unit not to attack move but target the Doge Walker first and what does this Doge Walker do he moves inside the, the buried territory the buried deep in the territory of the Doge's uh, city, thereby um, baiting our troop in a very vulnerable and dangerous position. So I made my um, I made a mistake right there, and uh, I noticed it uh, until I not yeah I noticed it, but yeah, bulk of my troop has been uh, I guess uh, totaled. Uh, unfortunately, but I do manage to destroy defense tower up north. Although um, whether I needed to do that was whether or not I need to do that was uh, uh, whether I need to do that was uh, sorry everybody. Uh, I've been speaking for 50 Victory! minutes. Victory with Ranconi captured. The road to Venucci is open to us. And my mouth is a bit dry, so um, sorry about that. Yeah, I examine map and basically view the carnage. I think in the original audio, uh, I mentioned that uh, it seems quite weird that you know, just capturing the Great City immediately awards me the mission because, I mean, looking at the the rest of the troops that Doge still had, I mean they still had a chance to maybe draw me back but maybe not but still uh, there was uh, enough um, I mean the mission is is that you know, the, as long as the objective is completed which I did I mean captured the great city then I guess it was okay for them to just award me the mission uh, they had like those cannons and three PLF flyers and uh, the mass of troops still and uh, but I guess um, since my great city was captured that they're formidable uh, military districts uh, were able to maybe um, you know lay 
artillery on them and uh, make short work of whatever it was left and all uh, the buildings there that they uh, had around the city so yeah um, this was a really pitched battle because there was basically no let up of the enemy in terms of um, just them producing uh, continually units uh, supported their, supported by their uh, mines uh, that they had up north and uh, And this mission also saw the usage of four heroes, although only two, I mean, yeah, Venza could have been better with her upgraded ability to level three, but uh, I think she definitely helped by drawing fire uh, in the initial uh, defense, uh, when the initial uh, defense tower and steam fortress started to attack my airborne unit, uh, she took all the took the brunt of the damage and uh, yeah I see two air destroyers here I could have um, used to support the, our squadron that attacked the city but uh, I forgot about them and yeah Venza is resting uh, right there my great city itself it's not as uh, impressive as the doges but uh, I had two cities Another one of the Forgotten Air Destroyer. Yeah, the Doge definitely built a lot of uh, research labs. He probably had uh, enough uh, research points to create at least two of the um, categories to full strength. Yep, so uh, yeah, this was another victory, whether it was uh, uh, very pitched or not. and. Yeah, and the Doge is making a move. Um, he's basically trying to um, close the gap between him and our forces, but he just can't help but you know see an open uh, state or you know right for taking, and he's attacking our uh, often mentioned Corban Isle. The Corban Isle has been pretty infamous state uh, so far because it's been featured in a lot of the LPs, I think, uh, LP episodes. Uh, and see whether we can upgrade any unit. We can upgrade either Clockwork Man or 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 the Scout. Yeah, and since uh, we are so close to the end of this campaign, maybe uh, we can just uh, make a push using the um, improved uh, Clockwork uh, Man. And Ranconi is another uh, one of those palace uh, cities where they have a palace district producing. Um, all the goodies uh, per turn instead of uh, just one turn after the district has been placed and wasteland looking at uh, different places to make our last upgrades before moving to moving toward the capital with district will be okay Um, yeah, military district, that's what I was thinking that time. Yeah, and then I accumulated a lot of army points uh, due to the fact that I invested heavily in the military district for my um, capitals. And um, either Clockwork Spider or Pierre Flyer, and I chose Pierre Flyer more airborne unit, uh, you know, it can't be all that bad. Uh, looking to see whether I can upgrade the, my heroes further. Uh, I think either Distruzio and uh, Battaglion can be upgraded, and Battaglion with his, uh, uh, with his specialty uh, siege ability uh, gets the upgrade, uh, and I'm definitely going to use him that, uh, when I'm attacking the capital, because, you know, I could have definitely used him in the mission we, we just uh, went over because 
uh, the green city could have fallen uh, really quickly and also you know the same goes for the apple city where I was not able to take it uh, in the beginning yeah so um, Giacomo now well he has another decision whether you know he can um, so be greedy and attack Celia before going after the capital which is which then by then will be surrounded um, if I would attack the capital outright then maybe Carlini or some other guy will chime up and say hey um, why don't why, why about what about Celia let's attack Celia first to gain you know, a, you know squeeze out a little bit of invasion points at the end but I'm toward just invading the <laughs> capital Alright, uh, this has been another episode, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. A demolition truck is headed for the bridge! A demolition truck is headed for the bridge!